Good morning, everybody. How you doing today? My name's Andrew. I'm Megan. I'm Grandpa. I'm Daniel. I'm Aunt Becky. And we're some of the veggie boys. Hey, girls. And we'd like to thank you for stopping by. If you're new here, please consider subscribing because we can grow a lot of stuff on the farm, but one thing we can't grow is this channel without your help. Welcome back, everyone. It's so nice to see you. As you can see, I've got a sweatshirt on again today. When I left the house this morning, the temperature was 43 degrees. Yeah, pretty chilly, but that's okay. We are expected to have a very busy day. It is a holiday weekend and uh, yeah, it's, it's just gonna be busy. We've brought up a lot of mums in front of the farm market, so we have plenty to sell. We also were able to pick up some gourds and smaller pumpkins. I think people are gonna be excited to see this stuff. We are gonna have to do some picking today, which is just a normal thing this time of the year. But uh, first things first, we gotta get the chores taken care of. Farm market is now all set up. We got everything filled up as much as we could. We do need to do some picking today, and dad is at the wholesaler. But there's not too much stuff that we need to worry about. We've been doing a lot of picking. We've been trying to stay on top of things, just because it makes it easier on everybody. From what I see, the farm market looks pretty good, so now we're gonna move on to taking care of the animals. I don't know if this is a sign of what's to come today. Farm market is all set up, and the parking lot is now full. We've had a few people asking about tomatoes and peppers. So that's probably something uh, well, they're gonna be focusing on up in the farm market. Daniel was down here, so we felt like it was a good idea to just get the cattle taken care of right away. Silage has already been dumped in just as you saw, and now we're working on grain. Cattle are all taken care of. We just got the chickens fed and eggs collected. The only thing left to do is feed the calves and then the animals are done and dad likes to feed the calves. So we'll let him take care of that. When Daniel got down here this morning, he started cleaning and sorting the tomatoes that we had harvested yesterday. We've been trying to make sure that we are plenty stocked for the weekend with ripe tomatoes. So this harvesting and sorting process that we've been participating in does take some time, but it is gonna benefit us in the long run. It also allows us to make sure that we harvest beautiful tomatoes tomatoes that we can use now and later. When the tomatoes come out of the washer, uh, we have two different baskets that we're putting them in. Our lighter ones go over here, but our ones that are ready for canning go into these baskets. And then once we have a basket full, we just put it on the wagon and take up. Just got finished running the round tomatoes through the washer. We got three, six, nine baskets that are ready to head up for canning. We were also able to get six and a half baskets of tomatoes that need to ripen up just a little bit more. There you go, everybody. Enjoy your tomatoes. Now that we're finished with the round, we're gonna be running the plum through. We have quite a few baskets. The area where we were picking yesterday was pretty nice, so these tomatoes look really good. I know the customers are definitely gonna be happy when they're getting tomatoes that look like this. Ooh, ooh, scary. All the ripe tomatoes that are ready to go up have been pulled out of the storage area, and then everything from here up was washed. So all these tomatoes are ready to go. And they look really, really beautiful. I mean, I say that every time we pick because I'm looking for beautiful tomatoes, but they do look really nice. I got the side-by-side -side hooked up to the wagon. Before we can take everything up though, we needed a few bags of potatoes. We have two different types of bags that we fill here, 10 pound bags and 50 pound bags. And we wanted 10 tens of white and 10 tens of red to take up. That is a gorgeous wagon. 
So, Grandpa, how do you feel about your beautiful wagon here? Beautiful wagon load of produce. You don't look that excited. Show me some excitement. Woo, 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 woo. I'm excited. Beautiful, beautiful. Daniel, don't go too fast because I don't want the baskets falling off. We've got a little bit of a problem. Daniel, tell him what the problem is. Can't get in to unload my tomatoes. Yeah, parking lot is full. I mean, it's not a bad thing, but we want to get our tomatoes unloaded. So to just kind of give you an idea of how many tomatoes we have up here, we have this wagon that's completely full. We have a few tomatoes up here put aside just for orders. And then we also have this section over here when people can select their own canning tomatoes and we box them up. So it's a lot of tomatoes um, and we got a lot of orders coming in. So it's a good thing that we have all these tomatoes because if we didn't, oh, we'd be in trouble. I just found out we have 16 plum tomatoes that are to be boxed up. So I'm going to get working on that. You know it's going to be a crazy day when you haven't even been out to the field and you've been working like a madman. But that's a good thing. You know, we worked so hard to get all this produce picked through the week. We want to sell it. It's a good thing. I just about got enough boxes here, so we'll have enough in case people show up and get more tomatoes. They won't have to worry about running out here and putting boxes together. Well, this will already be done for them. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven cars in the parking lot here. There we go. We've got a good amount of tomatoes boxed up. This is enough for that order. And we also have a few extra on there. Daniel's got to box up six baskets of round tomatoes yet. And I'm going to start carrying the plum tomatoes and putting them up underneath the porch. Just got all the tomatoes moved off of the wagon and onto the porch. We've got plum here, round. Then we had to put a few more plum right there. What's nice is we still have tomatoes down around back that are ripening up. And if we needed to pick more, we could. So we got plenty. Daniel and I are hopping on the side by side because we need to run out and pick some white corn. It's been pretty popular the last couple days. The people that have been looking for it heard that we had it. So they've been showing up quite a bit. We're just waiting for a spot to open up so that we can leave. Well, we were able to get out. So now we're on our way back to start picking. This is nice stuff. Now I've talked a few times about the things we look for as we're picking corn. And today I'm gonna to give you a little more in-depth lesson. When we look at the ear of corn, the number one thing we're looking for is that the silk is completely dried down. If the silk is completely dried down, it is no longer trying to pull in pollen and make kernels. The second thing I do is as I'm picking, I will squeeze with my hand. And if I can feel that the top of the corn is rounded off and it is a firm ear, then I know it's ready to be pulled. Some things you have to watch out for when you squeeze the top of the ear, if it feels soft or it doesn't feel rounded off, that means either two things. One, it's not finished growing and that could uh, be from it being a young ear or if you had a drought or another problem your ear just might not have filled out all the way or if it feels soft so it may be rounded off but it's soft up here at the top that could be bug damage and bug damage is a big issue and we find it a lot in our sweet corn but it's one of the things you have to deal with when you're picking sweet corn and once you pick a few thousand ears it's easy to tell which ears have it and which don't now based on the variety of sweet corn you raise you might have to change up some of these methods but for us this is what we look for and it makes harvesting the sweet corn a little easier when you know what you're looking for because you can move faster and you can save time by picking the right amount of ears. We got five red baskets and then one bushel basket full of white corn. That should be plenty for the weekend. White corn has been popular, but it's not near as popular as the yellow and white. So we don't go through it as fast as that sweet corn. But it's nice to have two different types there for the customers. 
Daniel and I got the white sweet corn back to the farm and we got everything moved in the cooler. And then dad and I hopped in the side by side and we drove over to the one farm where we have a lot of sweet corn because we want to see if it's ready to be picked. It's just about lunchtime, so we didn't want to bring everybody out. We just wanted to check. That way when we come out later, we know right where to go. Beautiful. Yeah, it looks really nice. But looking nice is half the battle, Dad. How does it taste? Well, this year it tastes wonderful. Let's just make sure. Yeah, okay, it's pretty good. Both sides of the side-by-side -side has corn on it that is ripe and ready to pick. We are coming up on like the last hurrah of sweet corn picking after Labor Day weekend. Not too many people are looking for sweet corn. You'll get the occasional order here and there for people that are canning, but it's not too much after Labor Day. So we have a little bit longer of heavy picking when it comes to the sweet corn, but then it's gonna start to slow down, which we're okay with. We have picked a lot of sweet corn. And this is just a good example of what happens to all the corn once we finish harvesting. Daniel goes through with the chopper and cleans it all off. And that's what we like to do, use every little part of the sweet corn. Dad wanted to check his beans before we went home. How do they look? Beautiful. I'm looking for white mold. I don't see any white mold in them, but I do. My only concern is I think they're a little on behind because we haven't had the heat this, this summer here in the Northeast um, in the sunshine that we normally have. So I think they need about another two weeks, three weeks before frost yet. So we should be okay, but it's a concern. All righty, all righty. Let's see what we're having for lunch. Ooh, it looks like Grammy has made like grilled cheese. But it's like open face grilled cheese with tomato and bacon. Looks good, Grammy. And I love this meal. We got finished with lunch and then we loaded up some bins and pallets onto the truck and we're making our way down to the cornfield. We're looking to get three bins of corn picked. We have some orders. We're expecting tomorrow to be very busy. So we just want to make sure we don't run out of anything. So starting off right away, there's not too much corn, but we are in kind of a wet spot. Once we get out of the wet spot, we should be fine. We just made our way out through the field. So we got our first picking off. We did not find much there. The uh, section of field that we're in, this is a bad wet spot. So the corn never really developed and the ears are very small if they did develop. We shouldn't be in it for too long. Once we get down a little further, it gets a lot better. But for now, we're just gonna have to pick through this stuff so that we're thorough. You know, I'm shocked, even though it's the middle of the day, this corn is coming off the stuff very easily. Probably from how wet the soil is and how much moisture we've had. You know, the corn isn't holding on to the ears, but it's just still impressive how easy they're coming off. through picking the sweet corn you know you can't help but think what well, what would have happened if it had been a dry year this probably would have been some of our nicest corn and another thing to mention is if we didn't have that drier weather in the earlier part of the year we couldn't have even got in here to plant so whatever we get we're going to be happy with it's just amazing how much the ground can affect the things you raise first bin has now been picked and we're on to our second just about wrap it up 
We got our final bin of sweet corn picked. We ran into quite a few problems as we got to the lower end of this field, not just from the wet field that was here, but from the deer damage as well. As we got closer to the wooded area, uh, it was obvious that the deer were hanging out in that stuff a little bit more and they caused some problems. Thankfully, it wasn't too much damage. It was something we could live with. I mean, you never like to see any damage in your field, but it's to be expected where this farm is located. This is a beautiful site. The three full bins, beautiful cornfield in the background. Who doesn't love farming? Come on. Well, if that is not enough corn, um, we're in trouble. But I think it should be enough corn. That that looks really beautiful. Those bins of corn. Woo As you just saw, corn is in the cooler. We spent a little time helping fill up here because the girls have been so busy. And to help them out a little bit, Matthew is actually staying help just to kind of take the pressure off of them. He also has to work on watering the mums a little bit. So he's got jobs he can do here. And dad is not with us. He had to run off. He's picking up some stuff from Mainville Ag. Is that the hat I'm wearing? Yeah, he's picking up stuff from them. And uh, Daniel and I are heading out to pick. Just the two of us. It's gonna be a good time. Daniel and I have a pretty diverse list of peppers that we have to pick today. Nothing too crazy, some hot peppers, some sweet peppers, and we're getting started off with a basket of Cubanel. We only needed one basket of Cubanel. The Cubanel peppers have not looked nice this year at all. And that's mostly because all of the planting was put into the wet spot or where we planted them was very wet this year. Uh, we didn't expect that to happen. Usually we don't have any trouble, but this year, oh, this year's special. This is what our plants look like right along the wet spot. Not too nice. Daniel and I moved over to the section where the hot peppers are. We're getting started on some jalapeno. And I think we're all excited about the jalapeno this year because, well, they are the biggest that we remember them. That's crazy. Daniel and I got the jalapenos that we needed. He moved on to picking the long hots. I'm gonna be moving on to hot cherry. We need three baskets of each because there's really none back at home. So once we get three baskets of each, then we'll just about be finished with peppers. I gotta say harvesting peppers this year has been really, really fun. Mostly because of the size of the peppers that we've been picking. Everything has been really, really big. And it's always fun to harvest large or even giant vegetables. I know I love doing it. When you find those like perfect peppers or you find those perfect tomatoes, it's, it's just a good feeling. But when you find those perfect large peppers or tomatoes, man, that's just a better feeling. Something that's really cool with these peppers, um, that we're picking right now, the hot cherry, is the size of these peppers varies greatly on where you plant them and how much nutrients that they get. If you have the right soil conditions and the right weather, these cherry peppers can get really, really big. Now, in the past few years, we haven't had cherry peppers that got that large, but this new variety that we tried, well, it's pretty big. Now, some people may be curious why it's so important to have large cherry peppers, and it's mostly because of what people use these for. Now, you can use them like a standard pepper. You can chop them up, add them to soups. You can put them in tacos. You can, you can use them for anything. But the thing in this local area that people like to do is take the top off, clean out the insides, and stuff them with meat and cheese. And uh, let me tell you, a lot of people do that here. Now, because a lot of people do that, we've always had customers in looking for these peppers, but we've never had them to the size that they are this year. And our customers have really enjoyed 
the larger ones. Now I mentioned nutrients was important in the area where you plant them. Uh, the soil conditions that we have here, this soil drains really well, thankfully. Uh, just to that end of the field though, does not drain well. So the peppers had plenty of water, they had plenty of nutrients, and because of those conditions, along with this great variety, uh, we have large hot cherry peppers. So what does that mean? Well, it means that everybody in the local area is talking about these cherry peppers, which means we're selling more. So someone could ask the question, does growing larger peppers help our business? Uh, yeah, it does, because word of mouth, this travels. If someone is getting peppers like this, oh, they're telling their friends. So if we are able to supply our customers, uh, the people in the local area that want these hot cherry peppers with nice large ones that fills their needs, uh, they're gonna be back next year, obviously, but they're also gonna be telling their friends. Because if I've learned anything about people who love peppers, it's that they're friends with people who love peppers as well. So is growing large peppers important uh, for us? Yeah, kinda because if you grow those large peppers, it brings in more people. Well, we've got the side-by-side -side loaded up pretty full here. We've got almost every seat full of peppers. And by the time we're done, we will have every seat filled because we need three more baskets of Italian L. Now this is the way all pepper plants should look. All right, this is how all your pepper plants look at home, right? Just completely filled from top to bottom. I mean, I sure hope so at least. Just got the last of the Italian pick that we needed for today, so we're gonna be on our way back to the farm. One last thing I'd like to mention about Italian L. These are one of my favorite peppers to eat because they have a crunch that is like no other. Mmm, pretty good pepper. Mm -mm -mm. So we just got finished with the work day. We got the animals taken care of. We got the farm market all closed up. I just put the quad in neutral. So uh, yeah, it's been pretty good day. Uh, peppers look beautiful that we brought in. We almost couldn't fit everything into the cooler because of all the corn that we picked. But where there's a will, there's a way. We made it work. So uh, now that I'm done with work for the day, I'm gonna head home. Well, I was heading home. I made a little detour because we forgot we had an order for yellow corn. So Matt and Uncle Albert were here picking the yellow corn. The same way we had to pick the white corn today because some people like just white corn, it's the same deal with the yellow corn. Some people, they want just yellow corn. We have got an exciting dinner planned tonight. We are having wine stew, and I'm uh, pretty excited about that. Are you excited, hon? Very excited. Callie's already gotten started. You enjoying that dinner? Dinner. But since we're gonna sit down and eat some dinner, that means this is where we're gonna end the video today. I'd like to thank everyone for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Bye bye Bye-bye.